in the first part of this two parts video uh, we've seen how music is mechanically machined into a lacquer disc using a very sophisticated lathe and uh, if you missed that part uh, I recommend you to pause this video and uh, go there to watch that first uh, link uh, somewhere here in overlay or in the description down below as mentioned in the first part, uh, the footage is to make these videos uh, was filmed in 2014. And when I met Mr. Filippo De Fassi, who is still today the general director at uh, Foreign Press International, he not only allowed me to film the whole uh, factory, but he was also so kind to explain the whole process in details. Unfortunately, when we went back home, we discovered the footage got damaged. Uh, the audio and uh, video were split and the audio uh, were broken into uh, a thousand of small files, almost impossible to recover. But nevertheless, the footage remained in the archive for nine years and only recently I was able, using a simple piece of software that I wrote myself, <laughs> to reconstruct uh, almost all the footage. So today I'm glad to present you the second part where we see how the delicate lacquer disc is transformed to be used to mass produce vinyl discs. Let's get started. The lacquer disc by itself cannot be used for replication and must be converted into a metallic stamper. This is kind of magic chemical and electrochemical process that begins by making the surface of the locker, which is an insulator, into an electrically conductive layer. This process is called silvering because it is based on a solution that contains uh, silver nitrate that is sprayed evenly on top of the lacquer disc. Silver nitrate is metallic silver dissolved in nitric acid and uh, the solution includes other compounds uh, to make it to adhere to the lacquer. Uh, so this is uh, where we, we have uh, the metal work done. Uh, it is called generally metal work. Uh, it starts from the lacquer, then the lacquer is uh, silvered uh, and, after, uh, and after the silvering uh, a negative is formed in uh, this uh, electrolytic bath, galvanic bath. Now the galvanic process can start. Once the lacquer has been silvered, it becomes electrically conductive. So after rinsing, it is attached to a rig that makes the disc uh, to spin while it is submerged into an electrochemical cell. The bath used in the cell is made of a solution of nickel ions, so an electric current is made to flow from the electrode inside of the cell toward the disc that, uh, being electrically conductive, becomes the opposite electrode. The electric current is carried by uh, nickel ions that over time accumulate on top of the silver disc. The process is carried on for enough time so that a thick layer of nickel is formed. After the process, the lacquer is finally removed. So the electroplating works um, at uh, around 62 degrees. Inside uh, you have the nickel sulfonate. In, uh, in the baskets uh, there, are, uh, there are pellets of uh, pure nickel. And so it, um, it's just uh, electroplating. At this point, a negative of the original lacquer disc is created and becomes the stamper that can be used to impress one side of a vinyl disc. Though to be able to make more negative stampers, a positive should also be made. This is a negative performed and centered, but it is a, a negative. But uh, for all titles, uh, um, we also make the positive so we play it from metal to metal. So the galvanic process is repeated again, this time on top of the negative. Though before doing this a detaching yet conductive layer is deposited on top of the negative so the new nickel won't stick on the stamper. Traditionally noxious chromates were used for this purpose but here they rather use non-toxic albumin. For example this is a 45 rpm record, a 7 inch. This part is a the positive, the back of the positive, the back of the mother, and this is the stamper. So now I'm going to show you how to separate the stamper from the mother and then how a stamper is uh, uh, worked uh, before uh, it can be mounted on the press because you have to center it under the microscope and then you have to preform it in order to give uh, the shape for the molds of the press. Once completed, 
The positive is detached from the negative and kept in archive in the case of new negative stampers needed in the future. With this we, we do a little bit of lever in order to break uh, the outer uh, edge. You can see I, I'm breaking now the edge and when you have enough surface you start to separate slowly, slowly. This is the positive the mother and this is a stamper. You can play this on the turntable and this is the negative uh, and you can feel with the finger that uh, uh, the grooves are protruding outside the surface. Now we center this uh, under the microscope, we let the vacuum uh, operate and let's see how it goes. Basically what I do is uh, to drill a one inch hole but perfectly centered with uh, a single groove so that uh, the needle then uh, plays straight and doesn't move when you play the right hand. So it's okay. First final touch is to trim out the rim and uh, to form the stamper so that it will fit the press machine. Okay, now it's ready. You see that it has the shape of the mold. And also it has a, a cone in the center. Because like a metal, a disc has two sides. This whole process from cutting the lacquer to making the stamper and its positive copy is repeated two times for the two sides of the final disc. When the stampers are ready, they are carried to the press department. Now this part could be a little bit confusing, so let me explain what's going on here. Because the machine performs multiple operations uh, at once. So um, on one side uh, it uh, uh, receives uh, through a hopper the pellet, the PVC pellet, uh, polyvinyl chloride, that is melted down and then uh, extruded uh, into a noodle. That the, then the noodle is cut down at a precise length, so that is dosed, precisely dosed, and then pressed into uh, um, a shape like a, a puck. And then uh, the puck is picked up and um, two labels are uh, attached below and on top of this puck and the puck put uh, in between two plates uh, and the two plates uh, uh, that hold uh, the, the stampers, the uh, side A and side B stampers uh, of the future disc uh, are pressed together so that uh, the puck is squeezed in between the two plates, the two hot plates uh, which uh, take the shape of the of the plates uh, with the grooves impressed on it and the two labels remain attached to the hot uh, sticky pvc and then the two plates are cooled down rapidly to let the pvc to uh, solidify enough so when the plates open it can be removed it's uh, an ingenious machine okay this is a record press and uh, it's uh, done to manufacture vinyl records. Uh, it has a, a hydraulic unit and it is connected to the, to the water and steam system which uh, runs all uh, throughout the factory. Because to make uh, records it takes uh, uh, steam and water to cool down the, the records. Uh, these are the molds. They, they, they give the shape of the record, so now I mount the stamper on the molds. These molds, as you can see, are connected to pipes. Uh, one is the inlet pipe and another is the outlet pipe. Inside these pipes, while the record is forming, uh, a flow of uh, steam at the 12 bars is running for some seconds, so that uh, the little pack of PVC which comes from the extruder can be pressed and be hot enough, become hot enough so that the grooves are fully formed. Then the record takes its shape and flatness uh, thanks to the water which cools down the record uh, and the press is still closed uh, when this happens. And, uh, and then uh, you will see that the press will uh, open and the record will be unloaded from the center of the press. Then we lock uh, the stamper with a center bush. This thing inside the bush 
is a center pin, which is actually what makes the whole of the record. Two pins, one in the bottom and another in the front, and they make the seven millimeter hole of the record. This is the clamping ring, which holds the edges of the stamper, which otherwise would be bent and uh, the stamper would immediately break uh, because it, uh, when it comes out from the press uh, it gets a little bit sticky so the PVC is a bit sticky so we have to use the clamping ring to lock the, the stamper in the edges normally the upper is the B side normally but it doesn't change anything This is how, this is what it is coming from the nozzle of the extruder. So it's basically a black spaghetto, compressed into inside a, a, a sort of cup, and it becomes a, what is what is called the pack. Labels have to be hot. So I'm going to make a, a pack with the extruder not good uh, when the PVC goes, uh, goes above uh, 160 degrees it goes like this, it inflates and stinks so we throw it away because otherwise so this is this is a, a record before becoming a record but it's the same uh, Okay, so now the machine is running. Makes the pack, picks up the labels, puts the pack in, into the press. Now the press is gonna close. You see the press going up. Steam goes in and then water goes in. Now the machine is cooling down the record. The record is unloaded, then it's trimmed. The very last step is to trim out the vinyl excess from the molded disc. And after slipping them into the envelope, ready for the distribution, they are stacked with these metal plates as weights to force them to stay flat while they completely cool down. After the first record is pressed and at random, a quality control is performed in an acoustically insulated room with a classic turntable. So we have reached the end of the long journey full of details and tricks that makes it possible to transform the original song into a mechanical record and to mass manufacture discs. And I hope you found it really interesting as I had, sort of lost art where many things can go wrong, requiring a lot of skills and experience. And I want to thank again Mr. Filippo de Fassi for having uh, allowed us to uh, see all that. Uh, I, I think it will have been a bummer losing this footage and uh, I hope you will agree with me with this. And so hit the thumb up icon and uh, share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, see you next time.
Bye.